You have no idea. <laughs> Before you got on, I, I began to talk about what God had downloaded to me. Um, and I wanted to share really while you were on, because I know you would get it. And it's pretty much summing up exactly what you're saying. So when I was created the contact to put up for social media so that they, you know, to create the graph or whatever. And when I started to create the graph, I chose a graph that was kind of like not normal for me, but when I looked at it, it was a digital background with a digital scroll. Right. So there was a digital background with a digital scroll. And the minute I noticed that the Lord said to me, I'm raising up digital prophets this season. And it's not like what everyone thinks they are. It's beyond the platform of social media. So I began mm. to write down the download of what he was saying. And I believe that as prophets, that this is where we are because we're talking about marketplace. Right. He said digital prophets are apostolic advisors of adoption agencies. Mm. They carry adoption agencies in them. So we present to them the papers of adoption. If you agree to this, you will be adopted in right. whatever case it may be. So he, as I went on to write down, he said, this new breed of apostolic prophet advisors will have a unique understanding of human behavior and are anointed as catalysts for digital transformation. This anointing is for connecting right people for the right projects. And he emphasized mm. projects are destiny. Right. Ministry business model is what we're moving into. And I know that's going to be some cliche for some people because people don't want to say business and ministry together. But unfortunately, we are about our father's business. And so everything we do, we do accordingly to his excellence because he is the boss. We are the workers. Yes. Right. So in the season, he is moving up the prophets in a place that's going to counterattack ministry slash business. And neither one is different. So they are anointed to modify culture, modify culture with people first process approach, people first process mindset. All, if you come to look at it, it's, it's literally a servant leader because a servant leader puts the people first. So mm. the prophet's reestablishing a kingdom culture back in to the marketplace and back into ministry because that has been lost. And then he went on to say they would carry these talents. They will know how to create. They will know how to fix. They will know how to grow things that are dead. They will know how to improve efficiency through frequency. Mm. And he began to reveal to me that there will be a sound. And those sounds in, 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 in places where we release the sound, whatever sound is needed for a manifestation to come through, that will be the frequency that will, will be sound abroad, whether it's in a corporate atmosphere, whether it's in, a, in the ministry, whether it's in regions, whenever, does not matter. Why? Because a prophet knows how to prophesy, a prophet knows how to pray, and a prophet knows how to shake kingdoms. And so once you get all those three factors into your identity as a prophet, that you will begin to shake a kingdom through frequency. This is right. why I call it a digital prophet because advance, advance our own as humans. I was just talking about this earlier. I'm like, we are not people of down, down grade, of upgrade. When God created us, he didn't create us at a low level to say, okay, you will stay in this place and never perform anything great for me. That, that mm. was not God's idea. So when we're talking about even now about the, the upgrade that he wants us to carry, he wants us to come into an upgrade. He begins to reveal that that is part of the things that he's equipped us with. So 
also, all of this is going to happen through, and he said it's so clear, through executive placement. Executive, he kept saying executive placement. And I looked this up. I said, what is this? And he said, it's a rank. I am placing these digital profits in a rank. What is this rank? He calls it, well, the world calls it the C-level title. If you go into a corporate industry, they'll say you're a C-level title because you are an executor. You execute. Okay. But the word C standing there means chief. That means that it's first in rank for for the people to come to. Mm. So even though we have a higher up, we have a, we're the ones you have to go through before you can go to higher up because we're trying to get you higher up. Right. Right. So God has already, already stamped a seal of C on these prophets. And I'll tell you why, because they're going to come with strong leadership abilities that have strategies to make decisions and people are going to trust their decision because they're going to do one thing that's going to show radical transformation that they're going to trust them with the rest of the organization. We don't need Mm -hmm. to own it. You don't need to own it. You just need to show up. Right. You just need to show up. These projects are going to be given for execution. We are going to execute these destiny projects. So these are people that I've chosen, that God has chosen in this time because they carry the master's mind. They have known and steward and learn how to carry the mind of Christ and they are being rewarded. It is promotion season. We've been talking right. about the shift of changing and I knew that some were getting demoted and we were in the process of that demotion. We were also in the process of promotion and it was always like we're waiting on the sidelines to see if we got demoted or promoted and God is saying, now you will know if you were promoted because you will start to see an upgrade. Mm-hmm. That is the sign. You will start to see an upgrade in you. And so the master's mind is what this prophet is going to carry in this season. And here's the systems of intelligence. This one blew me back. Why did he say the systems of intelligence? Because God refuses for scientists to try to create AI and try to get rid of the most intelligent beings that he has placed on the face of the earth. Though we are not as higher as the angels, but we have enough wisdom to overcome okay because because we have the wisdom of the lord so we're not lacking we have everything the father the father has given us with everything we need to accomplish this if we do not accomplish it it's because we have fell in a sloth state we have Mm. fell in a lukewarm state that's nobody's fault but our own because we're not pushing ourselves we're not pushing ourselves I I said this earlier. I said, we could be, somebody can ask you to run three miles and and you say, okay, I'm going to only give you three miles, but you never even pushed yourself to see if you could do another mile. Somebody gives you an assignment, says, "I, I want you to do these things. You never went further than what they asked. You're not pushing yourself. So do not get upset if you were demoted because God is, I said this yesterday on the live, God is moving. He has to. He has prophecies that must be fulfilled. People's books are written and those things must be fulfilled and he must move. And we are in a moving season. You did that now. You're saying it's a now season. We can't do 30 minute wait. We we can't do a 10 minute wait. We have to do it now. And so that is exactly where we are. There is an urgency. And if you're not feeling it, then you better start praying over the womb to wake up from your slumber. Because the urgency of the hour is that God is looking for people who's going to run with him. He's had enough people saying they were running, but they weren't running with him. So this season, he has prepared people to gird up and run with him, despite of what the opposition looks like. Because we're going to carry a manifold wisdom that's going to reveal a greater church. See, at Mm. the end of the world, people think that the church is going to die. No, the church is coming back in a greater victory and one supernaturally that no one has seen in the days of the book of Acts. 
And now we're coming into the place where it's going to be greater. We're going to enter into supernatural believing power, mm. not religious believing power. So we're not going to be scared to throw our staff to see if God will show that he is God. We are in the place of the Elijah showdown. And we don't have time to play with other people's gods. Well, we know that we carry the true God. So therefore, you have to go to these places and say, my God is the true God, and I'll show it to you. Mm. So now we're in 1 Corinthians, where he says, it's not by wisdom of man, but by the power that follows what I'm, I'm going to get ready to say. And the power must follow because people must begin to believe. They're believing in everything else. They believe that a witchcraft book is greater than the Bible. That it has more power than the Bible does. So we have to come into position. We have to come into position of number one, identity. You want destiny, but you can't have it with identity. If yeah. you have an identity crisis, we must get into a place of going into the master's mind. We want people to be able to listen to the sound that's being released. We want you to run. But if you end up running without knowing who you are, you're, where are you going? Because destiny gives direction. So the systems of intelligence is what he said it will be the blueprint of this operation system. One is to engage. This is not a season not to, it's not a season to disengage or dis disarm yourself. This is a season to engage, engage in spiritual warfare, engage in the, in, in destiny moments, engage the people that you, you don't know just in case there might be an opportunity, engage, 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 gird yourselves up to engage. It's no longer time to rest. It is no longer time to sit down and wait for the Lord anymore. This is a time to engage because God already did it. So it's grace time. It's now to find the vein of grace and start getting the strength that we need to begin to, to persevere because we got to push now. So engage, what are we engaging? We're engaging people. And if we're going to go to the marketplace, we're engaging customers and neither two are different. Neither two are different. Empower. We're here to empower the laborers and we're here to empower employees. We're here to empower one another. So if you're in a work environment where majority of the people are back at work and they're doing their due diligence, you should be empowering somebody in your job. Because I, I guarantee that if you would sow a seed of empowerment, that empowerment will come back to you. So if you're not feeling quite empowered at work, it's because you're not a great empowerment. The next thing, number three, is to optimize. We've got to optimize. We have to optimize. We have to train people. We have to and get rid of the outdated sources of our mind. So again, it's who are we going to be the new wine enforcers? We have to be some type of law enforcement here. And I'm not talking about the Old Testament law because we don't live at that. We live through the law of the spirit. Are we going to live out of those places of the spirit? What made Joshua and Caleb different? transformation and we talked about this we talked about the surgery what it was going to look like to get 2020 we have to remove your vision so we're going to be having a process in this hour of the vision removal to be able to do what we just spoke about with prophet love more and i hope that you are hearing i i, I promise you that I've, I've said it before in the live. I think it was yesterday when we went live. I'm going to say it again. Please do not try to connect dots, these new dots to dots of the past. Stop it. Because God is trying to lead in a new way. And you cannot use your reliance of your past to try to figure out what is happening now in this future. Must let go of all those outdated sources and begin to find a fresh new source to connect what God is doing. And so I hope that the prophet's word shows even another additional confirmation of what's being spoke about because he even touched on some things that we touched on yesterday. Stop being a sloth.
command your mountain. Start getting out of the place of lukewarmness and start coming into the place of the fire. Because I promise you, you will delay and even hinder what God is moving even now doing. And so we people have tendencies to do that. I, I God's grace is so sufficient. There's nothing lacking in God's grace. But if you don't know how to tap into that grace and move with the grace, then guess what? You become self, you become self-sufficient. And therefore you will lack. So I hope that this brings some more encouragement. I'm so glad we were able to come back and release this information to tie it together with what God is saying in this hour. Listen, the prophets already have spoken. If you do not apply <coughs> what is being said, it's no one else's fault but your own ears. That's why Jesus often said, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. That means not everybody was listening. So I hope that this blessed you. And hey, it's Friday. <laughs>